Uh, the other point is this. Uh, that is number three. The woman was a giver. And she gave from her heart. She knew that if I make a, lo a room for this man of God, and she knew it was not just something that she was giving, that was just something that she would give the man of God and she would, she would not tap from the man of God. She gave with all her heart and also she knew what you give to the man of God comes with a lot of blessings. She did not go to look for a rental house. I could imagine this woman, maybe she had many rental houses because the Bible says she was a very rich woman. She did not think of going to rent a house for the man of God because he had all the money and she would do that. Maybe she had rental houses and she would take one of them and give to the man of God and say, you'll be coming here, but she didn't do that. She, she did think of taking the man of God in a hotel because she would, do, she would do that if she wanted to do that because she had the money. But she knew this man of God had an anointing that breaks the yoke. She knew that if I keep this man of God in my own house, he will come with an with anointing, he will anoint the house, he will anoint the home, the room, he will anoint everywhere. And that is why she decided to give a room to the man of God, so that whenever the man of God comes to that room, he would pray for the whole house. Because he would be like one of them, belonging to one of them, belonging to one room, and he would pray for them. And he, she knew that if she places the man of God in her own house, the house would have an anointing from the man of God. So she was a giver, and she knew how to give the best. She knew this room, the servant of God slept, was not just and like any other room, it had an anointing of God. She knew this room had no evil powers. It would bring the power of God. It was a special room with a special bed, with a special anointing. So the bed was not just like a bed like any other bed. The room was not just a room like any other room. The place was not just a place like any other room. It was a place that was placed there by the anointing of God that at the man of God came to a house, he would anoint the whole house. He would pray for the whole house. And these people would be blessed because of the man of God. Because you can have all the riches of the world, but you will have no peace. You can have all the riches of the world, and you have no joy. And this woman did not care about the riches she had. She cared about what she would tap from the man of God. And that is why she knew this man of God has to live in my own house so that as he prays, he prays for the whole home. He prays for me and he prays for my husband. And so her giving was not just giving like that. Her giving had an anointing in it. The fourth point, she was a woman of faith. She walked by faith and not by sight. So when her child seemed dead, she walked by faith and not by sight. She went back to God with the eyes of faith. She never dismissed her baby. the word dead. She never told anybody, my child is dead. Because she had faith in God. She did not blame God. She did not mama. She did not complain. But she went to God with humility. That's when, why? Her husband asked her, is there anything wrong? She said, no, my husband, there's nothing wrong. 
because she knew her answer was not going to come from her husband. When the servant of Gehazi asked her, is there anything wrong with you? Is there anything wrong with your baby or your husband? She said, no, because she knew her answer was not going to come from these two men, the servant of Gehazi and her husband. The Bible says that in the Old Testament, God used prophets and angels. But in our time, he uses Jesus. So she knew this man of God who was able to speak to my womb, which was dead. And something like came out of it. It's the same man who will speak to my dead child, and this child will come back to life. And therefore she had faith that her child was going to come back to life by going straight to the man of God and not going to anybody else. And then I want to ask us here, me included, many times are the times that we go to people when we have problems, we want to confine in other people. Sometimes we are telling somebody your problem and this person has even more problems than yours. Sometimes you are letting someone to lay your hands, his hands on you and pray for you. And this person has got other powers that are so bad that if you only put down your knees and prayed to God, you would get your answer. How many times do we come to church? Like we've come to church today. We hear the word of God. We know what the word, what God is saying, but still, when we go outside the church, we go murmuring, we go whispering, we go going to people, asking them and giving them our issues, and yet God let us to come to church so that we may kneel down and pray to him, and our problems will go. The woman, the Shunammite woman, knew the secret of her answer. She knew her baby would only come back to life through the man of God who had touched her womb and it came back to life. She was bold and courageous. That is the fifth point. Women, are we in the house? How many of us can leave a dead body on the bed and travel a long distance without yelling, without crying, without telling anybody? And women, we know how to talk. We know how to say things. We know how to confide in people. We know how to slander, we know how to gossip. How many of us can leave a dead body on the bed, go a long distance without speaking a word even to your own husband? Not many. I included. I would shiver, I would drop down, I would scream, I would say things just like that. But this woman, the Bible says that she left her dead body on the bed and she took off, she went a long journey and she did not speak anything to anybody. She did not tell anybody her baby was dead and she went. She had all the courage, even beyond the courage of her husband. When her husband brought the baby to her, she sat with the baby on her laps throughout. I even wondered, I was asking myself, uh, if I were the one, if my husband brought me a baby who is sick, I would run to the hospital. But this woman did not go to the hospital. Have you asked yourself why she didn't go to the hospital? And then, she 
had all the courage even to know that this baby will come back to life. Because for me, I believe she knew this baby would come back to life. That is why she behaved the way she behaved. Even by placing that baby on the bed of the anointed man of God. She had all the faith. If I place this baby here, this baby will come back to life. So she had all the courage. She had all the courage. Even to talk to her husband and not to reveal anything to her husband. And the Bible does not even tell us that the husband at any point asked her how the baby was faring on or he had the courage even to say anything about the baby. So today we have learned the first, the five points. And as I stand here, I can see Jesus. I see Jesus. I, di I don't see the prophets. I don't see the angels. I see Jesus himself. Jesus is talking to us this morning and telling us that he is the answer to our problems. We don't need to go to anybody. We don't need even to go to the people we live with. We don't need even to complain. We don't need to mama. We don't need to say anything. We just need to pray to him. And he will do exactly that. He died on the cross of Calvary. He took all our infirmity. He took all. He did not have what you may have. Pastor just told us. He surrendered it all on the cross that we may have. There is nothing absolutely, nothing absolutely we can lack when we have Jesus in us. Even with only five shillings with Jesus in you. The Bible says that little is much when God is in it. Even just with your 500 shillings, 200 shillings with Jesus in it, you can start a business and move on. If you sit down and decide to murmur, to grumble, to say many things, to say, oh, 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 I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. Then you mean Jesus is still on the cross. But if our Jesus is risen, and the Bible says that he's seated at the right hand of God, and he lives to intercede for his children, then we should not suffer.
of the Savior. And that is why she never opened her mouth to tell anybody on the way her problems. She knew the answer is in the prophet of God who knows how to go to the Lord. Best. And as you 
of the world. Surrender to him. If it is that sickness that has put you down for a long time, surrender it to him. Tell him, Jesus is the one who gave me this body. He loves us so much. He says in his 
word. If your earthly father can give you bread, when you need bread, he can take you to school and educate you. He can love you that much. What about him? Our heavenly father who has everything. He will give us what we ask him. So we just need to ask him and trust in him. And he will do it for us. So my brothers and sisters, be blessed in the Lord. And know that God loves you. And he loves you with a passion. He loves you with an agape love. The Bible says that his love for you is as wide as the heavens are from the earth. And he's ready for you every minute, every hour. Nobody should change you. Jesus is there for you. Learn from the Shunammite woman and you will be blessed. So thank you for listening to me, listening to the word of God. God bless you. God keep you well. God shine his face about, on you and give you, peace, give you peace every day of your lives. Amen.